Welcome to this tutorial on using drop-downs with Material UI. By going to Material UI drop-down, you'll see four different types of drop-downs you can create. Flat, raised, icon button, and mini icon button. The first two are drop-downs based on text. The two last use an icon. The behavior of drop-downs is as expected. You can see the current selected value, click on the drop-down to see the list of options, and select another option. Let's take a look at all the options of the drop-down component. The first parameter, vertical pivot type, will define what element will be focused when the drop-down menu is opened. If you select first item, for example, you'll see that the drop-down button is aligned with the first item in the list. You can also set it to center or above base to display the menu on top of the drop-down button. Next, you have the horizontal pivot type that will define the position of the drop-down menu horizontally. You can define it to left, center or right. This works well for icon drop-downs, but if you want to see something change visually for a basic drop-down with text, you need to have an option item that has a long text, because by default, the drop-down menu takes the width of the button. Next, you have the expand start type parameter. In order to see what it does, let's change the animation duration from 0.3 to 1. Expand from nothing will show the menu from a size of 0. Expand from base transform width will first show the menu with the width of the drop-down and grow till it reaches its final size. Expand from base transform height will first show the menu with the height of the drop-down and grow. And finally, expand from base transform size will start the menu with the size of the button and grow. Ignore input after show timer allow you to handle misclick when you click multiple times too fast on the drop-down button. In some cases, it could show the menu and instantly select the option under your mouse. So here you can define a duration in second while the mouse or touch is ignored. Max height will limit the maximum height the pop-up will take. Let's add some elements to the menu. and change the max size to 50 and then to 300 When capitalized button text is on, it will set the drop-down value to uppercase When off, it will use the value specified in the option list The currently selected slider allows you to change the currently selected option and see its index. If it's set to minus 1, no item is selected. The Highlight Currently Selected option will control if the current option is highlighted when you open the drop-down menu. The Update Header toggle will define if the drop-down button content should be updated. When you select an item, the selected item by default appear in the drop-down button. But sometimes, you just want the drop-down to act as a menu. For example, let's create an icon button drop-down with a menu icon and add two options to it, settings and information. When we click on the drop-down menu, we don't want the icon representing the menu to change, so we just untoggle the update header toggle, and we can also untoggle the highlight currently selected parameter, so now our drop-down acts as a menu. Animation duration controls the duration of showing or hiding the drop-down menu, as we saw earlier. Then, we have the min distance from edge option, which controls the minimum distance the drop-down menu should appear from the edges of the screen. Let's create a drop-down with a label and place it on the top right of the screen. If we click on the drop-down to show the menu, you'll see it's not displayed directly on the edges of the screen. But if we set this value to zero, it will. Then, you have the item ripple data. 
which controls the ripple aspect of the drop-down button. You can see the tutorial on ripples for these options. Next, you can easily change the colors of the drop-down menu and items if you want. Finally, you'll see the options list in the inspector. You can decide to use basic Unity sprites or vector image icons. We'll stick to vector images for this tutorial. As with the basic Unity drop-down inspector, you can here define all your options. You can click the plus button to add an option, the minus button to remove one you have selected, specify the text to display for this option, and click on the big icon button to select an icon. You can also rearrange the list of options with the icons on the left. You can of course receive a callback when an option is selected in the drop-down menu by using the on item selected event in the inspector. Let's create a simple script that will display a toast showing the item we just selected. We just need to create a simple method with an int as parameter and use the int received, which is the index of the option list, to retrieve the information of the option selected. We just need a reference to the drop-down for that to access the list of options and display our toast. Let's try that. Finally, let's see how you can define the drop-down options via code. To do that, We'll create a dummy script which has a reference to our dropdown, and in the awake method, we'll define the option list. First, we clear the list, and then we just add all the options we want by providing the option text, option icon, and finally a callback to react to an option selected. Well, that's it for dropdowns. Don't forget you can play with them in the example scene. See you soon for a new tutorial.